no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. That's a quote from someone who had a tremendous amount of influence on my pursuit of greatness. Guessing it's an NBA legend? Guess again. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds to ever grace this planet. But what does what he said even mean? And how could something a physicist said apply to basketball? Well, I'm glad you asked. When we play a game, we have a certain view of it. I call that self-consciousness. But when we watch film, we see everything our self-consciousness couldn't. That's what I call ultra-consciousness. The goal is to bring our self-consciousness as close to ultra-consciousness as possible. And that's exactly what we'll be doing together here on this series. I'm Anthony Watkins, and welcome to Film School. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Film School. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episodes of the Fresh Squeeze podcast. I had a lot of fun recording those. If you haven't watched the Fresh Squeeze podcast, what are you doing? Hit the links in the description after you get out of class because the link doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. Yeah, we're doing that. But anyways, let's get right into it. You know, let's not play around. All right, so we started off with a great defensive possession there, got the steal, and we're off and running. You know, we wanted to play a high tempo, and uh, that's really one of the reasons I, I was actually signed by this team is so that we could play at a fast pace. And so they really wanted me to get out and transition anytime I could. And uh, just a couple of things that I'm looking for. The first thing I'm looking for is I'm trying to get to that rim. I'm trying to get downhill as quickly as possible and uh that's that's kind of where my focus is so you know i'm getting downhill and uh in my peripherals i'm looking for shooters so that's that's what i'm looking for first and foremost here in the backcourt all right so at this point we're paying attention to two guys all right one is the guy guarding me right here and that's big and we see his hips are turned so there's no way he's cutting me off absolutely no way if he cuts me off I need to get sub and uh, probably released, honestly, uh, because he's just inviting me into the lane. The next thing, we see all that space in the lane, so I got to attack. So now, since there's no shooter in the weak side corner here, we got to look at the strong side corner. So I'm looking at his man and seeing how he reacts to me attacking full speed to the rim. Okay, notice how fast all of this is happening. I'm having to process a lot of things. So we see my strong side corner guy. He's nice and deep in the corner, making that defender make a decision. And he jumps, all right? So that's the read. I've picked the ball up already. I want to do that anyways in transition, whether I'm passing or shooting. Because once I kind of get into that lane, I want to have that ball secure and take long strides through the defense and get to the basket. Um, but we see here Lucas's man, and Lucas is the guy in the corner here, his man committed. And so the obvious read is to kick it right there. One thing though, I have to watch out for is this other guy down here in the paint. But as of right now, he has poor positioning because he's inside that circle. He's inside that restricted area. So he can't take a charge. The only way he can get me into jam is if he steps outside of that that circle but as of right now I could barrel over him obviously don't want to do that if possible but but yeah so we make the read we got the shooter there in the corner and he does what he does puts it in we gain a lot of momentum there big time stop on one end and convert it into an easy three-point shot and those are the plays that we need at the professional level All right, so on this play, we're in what's called a diamond set. So I started in the middle of the lane and chose a side to come off on. Uh, both both bigs are on, e on either block and uh, are setting me a screen for me to come out. And uh, so I'm going to catch the ball here and immediately receive a ball screen going towards the middle uh, and going towards my right. Okay, so we immediately see my defender was really lazy on this play. 
I didn't even realize how lazy he was. You know, I could have just stopped and popped a three here, but I didn't even make that read. Uh, you know, was not expecting him to get caught in that screen so easily. Uh, but other than the shot, we see I have two other options here, and it really depends on what one defender does. And it's this guy right here regarding Lucas, the help side, the help side uh, from the weak side. So I'm reading him, you know, because my big right now is wide open, wide open. If I get it to him, you know, he should be able to score. And, uh, you know, so I got to read. I got to I got to read what that weak side defender is doing. So we see. Uh, I made the right pass because that weak side defender is uh, not committing to the big. And uh, really, this should be a quick spinoff and a, and a right-hand finish. All right, so for all the bigs watching, because, you know, a lot of this, because I play point guard, uh, is point guard reads. And, you know, that's important as well because as a big in today's game, you might come off of, off of screens. And uh, if you're a bigger guy who can make ball screen reads, I mean, that's only going to help you. But in this situation, we want to just talk to the bigs. And this obviously also applies to guards who find themselves in post-up situations, whether that's against a smaller guard or, you know, that's just kind of how the game shakes out. It's important stuff. So as a big, you want to read the game no different than a guard does. You want to see what's happening around you before it actually happens, you know? So, Juro catches the pass from me and immediately turns, he likes to face up. But, like I said earlier, you know, the right read is to just spin off and finish with the right hand there, easy layup. And the read here is he's looking at the two people around him. He's looking at that guard right there who I read didn't help, and he's looking at that big. You know, and for him, he's a big, strong guy. So for him, that little guard shouldn't really make a difference in his decision. All right. He can go through that guard and finish an and one, even if he's there. And, uh, you know, if that guard commits, then obviously he has to kick out to Lucas as well. So <clears throat> really no wrong decision there. Um, but, yeah, it's just a matter of slowing down and uh, making that read. But you want to watch the guys around you. And once you do that and have an idea of what they're going to do or where they're going to be, then you'll have no issues. You know, I just want to take a second to point out from, from this perspective, it looks very obvious what he should have done there. And uh, oftentimes that's, that's the case. You know, we sit there and watch and, you know, like they say, Hindsight is twenty twenty, but from his self consciousness perspective, you know he made the right play. He made the right read. You know he took in the information from what he saw, and uh, and made the instinctive play. And what we're doing here is just kind of refining our instincts, and that's why it's so imperative that you watch film. Not only watch film school, but watch yourself. You know, watch yourself. The reason I'm doing this and and posting it for you guys is so that you have an idea of what to think about when you're watching your film and not just kind of picking out highlights. Cause you know, I've done both. I've, I've just watched my highlights. I've, you know, kind of kept track in my mind where the great plays were and just watched those over and over. But, uh, you, you want to really watch what went wrong because, you know, it, the, the solution is often very simple, very simple. And so you want to watch your bad games even more than the good games. And I, I'm sure you've heard that. Uh, you can learn more from the losses and the bad games than the good games. But, you know, if you think about this, think about how dangerous you are if you're able to shore up just one one thing that consistently goes wrong in your game. Just think about how strong, how much stronger of a player you become. And we see, you know, the, the small details that, uh, you know, I mean, he watched that, I know he watched that tape and saw, and he was like, oh man, I made the wrong read. So I just have to be more aware of that, you know? And uh, he fixed that up and the next game, he made the right read and scored two more points because of it, or maybe even six more points, 
you know, so it's really the simple things and you don't see them if you only watch your highlights. All right, guys, don't want to keep you here too long. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, it was a lot of fun once again. And uh, you guys already know the drill. First squeeze podcast tomorrow, you know, on this video, you already know. Like, comment down below and subscribe while turning on the notification bell so you don't miss another episode of Film School. It's been real. Take it easy. Thank you.